The 2018 federal farm bill drastically changed the marijuana landscape in the United States. It legalized hemp products, even in states long opposed to legalization. Conservative state lawmakers immediately tried to outlaw hemp in Tennessee, but to no avail. Despite repeated attempts to change rules and regulations, hemp and CBD dispensaries have flourished. But the future is a little more uncertain. We continue our special reports, The Legal High, with a look at the legislative challenges the hemp industry faces. It's beneficial for us to have a conversation about how to legalize it and why to legalize it. Jake and Sima Seipel, along with their five children, operate Cron Cannabis Dispensaries in Nashville, Franklin, and Nolensville. They believe the issue of cannabis is kind of over. Our community is far beyond whatever the law is. People out there using cannabis product, whether it's legal or not legal. Some critics want to ban hemp because it can produce a high, which the disciples admit is one of the attractions. There's so many people that they do come for um, a pleasure sure. aspect of it. Yes, we have so many people for health aspect coming, but on the other side, people are coming to make especially these days, make the life more tolerable. Stress level comes down. So, yeah, obviously it will cut probably more than half of our business. If they were to ban these things, THCA, Delta-8, yes, it would definitely, I mean, cause a, 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 different, a definite problem in our business, 100%. Tennessee lawmakers failed to outlaw hemp, but approved a 6% sales tax on products require buyers to be over 21 and have hemp-derived products placed behind the counter. Lawmakers are still debating banning Delta-8, along with other moves that could put hemp dispensaries out of business. What I would say to them is, please talk to me first. Please come educate yourself first. See what the reality of cannabis truly is, not the reality of cannabis painted by a community that looks at it just as a drug to get high or a gateway into something else. And if you don't know it, you don't use it, you don't understand it, then before you regulate it and put your stamp on it and crush it, have a conversation with people who do know it and use it and understand it, is all I'm saying. Because the reality is it's no good to go any other direction. It doesn't do any good for the community to shut me down. The Cyples have invested their time and money into their business and it operates under legislative uncertainty. One day my heart is, uh, I get up, I'm like, okay, if it happens, what I'm gonna do, what's gonna happen? What happens to our community? What happens to our family? One day I'm so optimistic, I can move the mountain, and everything is good. We don't know. It's such an um, uh, unknown thing for us. The class of people that are in the political end of things, that are writing the law, they don't really truly understand the constituency. They've already decided what's good for them. There's 60, 70, maybe even 80% of the community that uses cannabis in one way or another, whether they get it from my store, they get it from the store across the street, or they get it from the, the place down the road, or whether they buy it from someplace outside the state and get it shipped in here, because I have lots of people who tell me these things. So the reality is that cannabis is being used, and the government isn't doing any favors by shutting it down to themselves. They should have a conversation with people who understand what the community is already doing, and the community is already far past this. You can find all of our coverage on The Legal High at WKRN.com. It's in the Special Reports section under the News tab at the top of our homepage.